Hello students. So today we shall discuss the anomalous secondary growth in Bahravia. This is Rekha from Government Science College, Bangalore. So what is anomalous secondary growth? In most of the dicot stems, normal structures with a ring of collateral vascular bundles are present. But during secondary growth, inter and intrafascular cambium, it forms a ring and cuts off secondary xylem on the inner side and secondary phloem towards the outer side. But in a number of plants, secondary growth is deviated from this normal type. So this deviation of secondary thickening is called as abnormal or anomalous secondary growth. So what are the anomalies? What are the abnormalities? So anomalous secondary growth in dicots, it may be due to the anomalous position of cambium, abnormal behavior of normal cambium, accessory cambium formation and its activity, extra stellar cambium and inter xylary phloem. And other than this, absence of vessels in the xylem, scattered vascular bundles in dicots, presence of exclusive phloem and xylem vessels, presence of medullary bundles, presence of cortical bundles, vascular bundles arranged in a ring in monocots, secondary growth in monocots. So these are some of the anomalies. So, the growth in the plant, it is either the primary growth, secondary growth or anomalous secondary growth. So, primary growth is caused by the apical meristem. It results in the increase in the height of the plant. Whereas, the secondary growth is due to the intercalary meristem which is responsible for the increase in the girth or thickness of the plant. The anomalous secondary growth which is the abnormal secondary growth is of two types. One is adoptive and the other one is non-adoptive. So adoptive it is adopted because of the external condition. Non-adoptive it is due to the variation in the cambial activity. So let us study the anomalous secondary growth in Baharavia. So the young stem shows the normal structures of a dicot stem. There is a single layer of epidermis with numerous hairs followed by the few layers of colanchyma and the cortex has few layers of parenchyma with the chlorophyll bearing cells which is called as chloranchyma. The endodermis is not very prominent and the pericycle is one or two layers of parenchyma and the most interesting here is the vascular bundles of arrangement. They are arranged in three rings. One is the first ring consists of, see it has three rings, the outer, middle and the inner. So the inner two large central medullary bundles. The middle ring consists of 6 to 14 loosely arranged bundles and the outer ring of small 15 to 20 bundles. So the middle and the inner bundles increase slightly in size. See in this diagram you can see the three rows of bundles. The middle bundle and the inner bundle increase slightly in size due to the activity of the intrafascicular cambium. In the third ring the cambium forms a complete ring by the formation of interfascicular cambium. That means the intra and the inter combine together form a continuous cambium ring. The intra and the interfascicular cambium, they form a complete ring and produces the secondary xylem in the intrafascicular region and lignified conjunctive tissue in the interfascicular region on the inner side and on the outer side, secondary phloem facing the secondary xylem and parenchyma opposite the conjunctive tissue. This is the abnormality here. So after the formation of the secondary tissue, the cambium stops its activity and a new cambial ring arises in the secondary parenchyma outside the conjunctive tissue and, it the and from the pericycle outside the phloem. So this accessory cambium functions in a manner similar to the fascicular cambium and produces similar types of tissue. 
so as a result of this a fourth ring of vascular bundles of secondary origin are produced so very soon this vascular cambium also stops functioning and one more cambium gets differentiated which also functions in a similar manner so like this a successive cambial differentiation and several concentric rings of vascular bundles are formed so these vascular bundles they get embedded in the thick conjunctive tissue separated by thin walled parenchyma giving the appearance of the growth rings you can see here so you can see a different uh, rows of vascular bundles this is a portion of the stem of boharavia in a transverse section so you can see the cross section of boharavia stem showing the successive rings of xylem and phloem so the overall summary of this lecture is in a majority of angiosperms development proceeds according to a set plan and as a result the normal anatomical details will be seen so that means the inter and the intrafascicular cambium they combine together it forms a complete ring and cuts off the xylem inside and the phloem outside adding to the primary xylem and primary phloem so this is the normal secondary growth so the deviation in the normal pattern of development is said to be the abnormal type or anomalous type so anomaly in anatomy may be seen in both the primary structure as well as in the secondary growth so it may be adaptive and non adaptive so the anomalous secondary growth is very common in tropical plants so this is the adaptive anomaly so a uh, uh, non adaptive anomaly is due to the variation in the cambium thank you